We're going to be in Mark's gospel today, uh, finishing out the series, 12 Baskets. Everybody say, 12 Baskets. 12 Baskets. Baskets. We've been in this series for two weeks, and, and I really, really enjoyed going through all of the Gospels. This is one of those stories uh, in the New Testament that Jesus uh, covers in, in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, four different accounts, four different perspectives of the same story where Jesus fed the 5,000. What I love about the Bible, if you've noticed this, we've spent three weeks in one story. Like there is so much depth, there is so much detail, there is so much life application that we can get from, from reading and studying the Bible. In week one, we, we studied that, that we have to operate sometimes out of a painful place and that sometimes uh, Jesus found himself in a remote place here because his first cousin, one of his best friends, John the Baptist, had been beheaded uh, for basically being a Christian, for, for calling out uh, uh, the government, for calling out Herod, and he's beheaded and killed. And so Jesus, we find in Matthew's Gospels, in a remote place alone because he's in a season of pain. And we decided that we we're oftentimes coming into or in a season of pain or, or chaos or, or doubt, but we still have to accomplish the mission that God has given us even in those seasons. And kind of the takeaway from week one is that we're not going to allow our season of seclusion to surrender our purpose that God has for us. And that, that we decided that sometimes there's a, a blessing in the breaking, that God is never closer to us than when we're, when we're brokenhearted, when we're, when we're struggling, that he comes in. And in the book of Psalms, that he counts the tears that roll down our face. Like he loves you, but he can use your brokenness to, to make you better and to, to build something new on the inside of you. Week one, we left with good enough is no longer good enough. And the season that we're in in America and our world as we get closer to Jesus returning one day, that heaven, hell, reality. So we can't settle for good anymore. We gotta give God access to everything. Last week, we got through it. We took a good trip to the dentist's office, talked about giving last week, and we decided that order is important, that the order in which we give God access is very, very important, that he doesn't want the leftovers, he doesn't want the scraps, he doesn't want the overflow, he wants the first, because God wants to know that you and I, we trust him. We decided that obedience is important, that we're gonna do what God asks us to do. That organization is important because we need to be organized. We need to have proper systems to steward what God is doing. And then we decided all together as a church that ownership is important, that we all have a part to play in the miracle. I want to go back to, to Mark's gospel today. We haven't read from Mark's gospel, and I want to read Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 37, and jump into this last week of 12 baskets. Again, this is Jesus feeding the 5,000, 5,000 men, if you're new with us, been about 12 to 15,000 men, women, and children. It says, the apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. They were so busy, they couldn't even eat. So they, they, they were hungry at this point, and then the crowds start to gather. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. But many people recognized them and saw them leaving, and people from many towns ran along the shore uh, and got there ahead of them. So basically they saw Jesus go off in a boat and, and they see where he's going to the kind of the other side of this, this smaller body of water. And so they're just running along the shore like Jesus, like, hey, I just need to take a little break. Like I just need a little bit of rest and people are just following him around. It sounds like being an action church in the foyer sometimes as a pastor. <laughs> just kidding, that was, that was off the cuff. Maybe I'll cut that one for later, I don't know. <laughs> Jesus saw the huge crowd. He saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. We're gonna get back to that in just a moment. Send the crowds away so they can go to nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat, is what the disciples said. But Jesus said, you Feed them. I want you to write down if you're taking notes today. The title of today's message is It's Getting Late. It's getting late. Like the people are hungry. The people are in need. The people are a, a sheep without a shepherd. And it's, it's getting 
late. How many of you have said that before in your own life? It's getting late. Come on, if you have kids, it's getting late. You know, I, I love and hate time change. I hate time change because I love to play golf and I love to be uh, active outdoors and it gets early, uh, it gets dark much earlier in this season. But how many of you parents know with young kids, it's so much better because it feels like nine o'clock at seven o'clock and you can just say, especially before they can read time, it's getting late. Come on, you've done it before. Come on, parents. It's 6.45, but it's dark and you're like, man, it's bedtime. And they're like, really? It feels early. It's dark outside. It's getting it's getting late. Come on, New Year's Eve is coming up. And, and some of you, how many of you raise your hand here at Winter Park, Sanford, South Orlando? You are New Year's people. You stay up into the new year every year. Not very many people here at Winter Park. Got an older crowd here. Not, not, the 9 a.m. is very rarely here to party. That's what I found. You know what I mean? Like, that makes sense. Like, it fits while you're at the 9 a.m. at all of our locations. Like, no, I go to bed at 9 p.m. I joined, like, Europe's New Year's at some point because they're ahead of us. It's like 6 p.m. It's getting, it's getting late. You know, I, I go to the airport quite a bit, travel and speak um, all around the country and the world. And, and how many of you are, are like, I get there three hours before type airport people? Like, you have to prepare for everything. What if we run out of gas? What if there's traffic? What if I get a flat tire? What if the, the baggage claim thing is broken? What if security is set seven hours long? Like, what if TSA is on a break? Like, you just, you are those people. Like, you're at the airport a day in advance, sleeping in a sleeping bag. Like, I just don't get it, but I, but I do get stressed, and if people travel with me and they're not used to the rhythm or they don't have TSA pre-check or they don't know where to go, I'm like, hey, let's go. It's getting like, I will just leave you. Like, if you're with me and you're not ready, I'm going where I need to go. Like, I'll see you at the gate. If you get there, good luck. And I'm not talking about just staff. I'm talking about my kids. Like, hey, boys, you got your stuff. You got your ticket. Daddy's going on vacation. It's getting, it's getting late. Watched some football yesterday. It gets late in the game, and it's getting late. You go into a prevent defense, and the only thing that does is prevent you from winning the game. And that's, it's getting, it's getting late. We've got curfews growing up. It's, it's getting late. Come on, this is a church joke. How many of you, mostly guys have wives, but some of you wives have husbands that just love to hang out and talk like after service or at every event, and you're like, it's, it's getting late. Like, how long are you going to be in that foyer, in that room, in that house? Like, how many of you guys, you're, you're, you're a go-to-the-car type of guy? You're like, I'll just meet you at the car. Like, I just, I'll just be in the car listening to a podcast or something. It's, it's, getting, it's getting late. It's getting late. And this week is an application to the first two weeks. It's getting late. Like, we have got to go. Like, you're late for your flight. You're late for an event. Your kids are, it's time to go. It's getting late. Like, we have got to do something. And this week is, is a call to action. This week is the answer to the question, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? What role are we going to play in the miracles, in the ministry, in the mission that God has for, for you and for me? If we go back to Mark's gospel, we see the disciples doing everything that, that we kind of do as a church. They were on a ministry trip. They were into evangelism. They were reaching the lost. They were teaching, just like we do on Sundays and student nights and our action kids. Like they were, they were doing the thing. They were seeing miracles. Miracles were, were happening on their tour. Jesus, we see in Matthew's gospel, he was healing the sick on the shore. It says, I'm gonna teach them because they're a sheep without a shepherd. They don't know where to go, so I'm gonna teach them where they should go. That's why teaching is so important in the mission of, of Jesus Christ. And then we get to this feeding. There are practical needs that need to be met. There are practical things. There are people that are hurting. There are people that are lonely. There are people that are helpless. And we are called to get this, verse 37, to feed them. To feed them. And last week we talked about Andrew notices the, the young boy and he says, he says, I know there's somebody in the crowd that, that has a basket, two fish and, and five loaves. And, and, and he, he's looking around, Jesus is teaching like he's teaching like I am right here. He's kind of probably on a big rock or a stone and bring me this basket. And he says, hey, Andrew, bring me that basket. So you'll be Andrew uh, um, and I'll be Jesus you want to be Jesus and I'll be Andrew? Okay, I'll be Jesus. Not, I'm not actually Jesus. Like, nobody put this on YouTube. Like, Pastor Justin actually said he's Jesus. I'm just, it's just an analogy. Like, just calm down. But you be Andrew. No, hold on. You be Andrew. You already gave it to me. Let me hold it. 
You be Andrew, and, and I'll, be, I'll be Jesus, okay? And so you've gone and you got the basket, and it's a lovely basket, and let's just pretend that there are two fish and five barley loaves in here. We didn't do that because the fish would begin to smell throughout the three services today. And you hand me this, this basket. Like, you've done everything. Like, and you've seen me do miracles. We're, we're well into the Gospels at this point. And Jesus, the Bible says, he, he says he took it, he blessed it, and then he gave it back. So hold on, just stay right there. Like, so here's what happened. He gave you back the same thing you gave him. Can you just imagine the look that you would give him? You're like, uh, Lord, uh, where's this gonna, we still have a lot of people. He's like, no, we're good. You take that, sit them down in groups of 50 or 100, and you, you go feed them. And then he goes back to teaching. Like, he's back to, to prophesying. He's back to preaching. He's like, now, where was I? And he's like, why are you still standing here? No, no, I blessed it, and then I broke it, and now you go, okay, we're good now. You can go sit. Thank you so much. Give her a hand. So you see, you see, sometimes we hand Jesus our things, our issues, our plans, our money, our ideas, and he blesses it, but then he hands it back to us because he said, I've given you all that you need to accomplish all that I'm calling you to accomplish. And too many Christians wait in a seat or on the sidelines say, now when are you gonna do something? He's like, I already did it. You gave it to me, I blessed it, now you go do something with it. If it's blessed, if it's blessed, you can build anything with it. If it's blessed, you can do anything with it. If it's blessed, maybe Jesus has already done all that he's going to do, and he's saying, you, the church, go and build, go and do something with this. But Jesus, we only have one basket. Jesus always turns what's not nearly enough into more than enough. Like when he blesses it, it's, it's more than enough. And you have, you need to get this today, you have all that you need when it's blessed. When it's blessed by God, you have all that you need. Say, Pastor, I don't have. Well, then you don't need. Because if you've made yourself available, like we sang earlier, and said, God, Jesus, I give you everything. I give you access to everything. When he blesses it, you have all that you need. And these disciples, they saw one basket feed 15,000 people. But if we finish the story, let's jump ahead. I don't think the team even has this in their notes. I wasn't planning on going here, but I just, I feel like we should. Verse 43, or verse 42, they all ate as much as they wanted, and afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. And so they were hungry coming in, and they leave with 12 baskets. So, so they, they start with one, they leave with 12. 12 is important because 12 is the number for miracles in the Bible. And so Jesus is, is doing a miracle here. And 12 baskets, maybe you've never caught this before, 12 baskets, there were 12 disciples. So like they all left with a to-go order. So like they come from their ministry tour, they're tired, they're weary. Pastor, we, we did expansion last year, we gave last year, we did serve Saturday last month, we did reach week last year. Well, when are we gonna stop doing, they, they were on their ministry tour and Jesus says, no, we're not done, we're just getting started. Like we have a full day left and, and they spend all day feeding and serving and organizing because you need to get this today, serving the cause of Christ and giving to the cause of Christ will always cost you. Salvation is free to receive, but the cost of discipleship is lay down your life, take up your cross, and follow me. Like, like they, they didn't catch this. They didn't eat first, but they did get fulfilled. And that is what it means to lay down your life and, and be a leader and be a servant of Christ. That, that I'm not gonna, I'm gonna worry about, I'm gonna focus on, I'm gonna prioritize Jesus and others first because I know if I do that, then God will take care of me. Like they basically, on this trip, they went on a cruise with a meal plan. The next miracle is them seeing Jesus walk on water and Jesus said, hey, I, we're just getting started so you're, you're gonna need a to-go bag for where I'm going to take you. He gave them all that they need. The next miracle is Jesus and then Peter walking on the water in Matthew chapter, I mean in Mark chapter six and seven. He's walking on the water what I got this week when I was reading it is this, is that Jesus had them do a miracle for someone else before he was gonna do a miracle 
for them. So Peter, he served thousands. And then Jesus said, well, you serve thousands, and if you still put your faith in me, you can, you can walk on the water. It's the order from last week. It's the obedience. It's giving God access to everything. It's getting late. Heaven, hell, and heaven, hell, reality for people. And so we've got to, we've got to give Jesus access to everything. Matthew's gospel says, but we only have five loaves and two fish. We only have this, this one basket. And that scarcity mentality will always keep you and the church from fulfilling its mission. Like, I only have. Like, Pastor, I was served, but I, but I only have this one night off. I would lead that small group, but I only, I only, have, I only have this one bedroom apartment, apartment. Well, it can be a small group. Like, just make sure it's, it's a small group. And if God needs you to have a bigger group, he'll give you a bigger apartment. Maybe God's not blessing what you have because you haven't given him access to it. But I only have, Pastor, I'm not skilled. I, I can't lead worship. I only have this, this one skill or this one amount of time. I only have this one little salary or this one little idea. This one thing that you and I have in the one, like the one Jesus hands is all that we need. It's getting late, and Jesus gets out of the boat, and he says, I'm going to have compassion. I'm going to heal. I'm going to deliver. I wrote this down this week. People who live with, but we only have mindsets, will always live with only what they have. But people who live with, my God has everything I need mindset, will be used for the miraculous. It's getting late. It's getting late and, and people's lives and people's eternities are, are in the balance. You know, one of our, our young pastors here, uh, Pastor Evan Harper, uh, we were working on this series together and, uh, with our, along with our teaching team and he wrote this, this poem or this spoken word kind of summarizing this story and, and I asked him uh, if I could read it to you today and uh, just Forgive me in advance. I don't know if you know this, but I'm not, I'm not much of a poet. <laughs> or, or like a MC or a rapper. And so this, this, may, this may not be up to some of your English teacher standards. Pastor Tyler would do a much better job. <laughs> but it's getting late. I want to read this. And I want you to just kind of put yourself in the story and maybe contextualize it to your own story. It's getting late. The crowds pushed forward, nowhere to go. Jesus stood on a mountain, disciples below. They asked him to send the families home. No money for food, not a dollar from Rome. Unshakable disciples, not sure what to do, what to pursue, overwhelmed by the need, wouldn't you? We can't heal them, we can't feed them, we're stuck. Only five loaves, two fish, good luck. Jesus broke the yoke of unprovision, furloughed, bank loan, bad decisions. He used those disciples to accomplish his mission. Unfit, insecure, lonely, and scared, five loaves and two fish had been prepared. But Jesus broke the bread into two. Generosity, now even an option for you. Five loaves, two fish, a miracle worldview is all it took for a 5,000 man breakthrough. Will we let what is inconvenient stop us if it's getting late, will our passion drop us? Despite all the world has put atop us. We will not allow the lies of this world to make us apostles into fossils. Extinct from the fabric of making a difference, the enemy cannot stop our persistence. Because my creator, my Lord, has healed the hurting, clothed the needy, and fed the hungry through all resistance. It's getting late. Take what I have, five loaves, two fish. 
what a difference it can make. I think this is our call to action. The world is it's kind of crazy right now. And it would have us pick sides and pick fights and pick battles. But at the end of the day, Jesus stepped out of the boat and he said he had compassion on them for they were like a sheep without a shepherd. I think our job as a church is to make sure that the sheep that God surrounds us with know that there's a, a good shepherd that can lead them. It's getting late, let's read it, verse 34. Jesus saw the crowd as he stepped from the boat. He had compassion on them because they were like a sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. It's just getting late. Like we are, we are short on time. Now the Bible says that nobody knows the day or the hour of Jesus' return and, and nobody knows the day or hour of, of our own death. I don't know if you know this, but you are one day closer to your death today. That's not negative, that's just a fact. And we have people all around us and, and we, we have access to the miraculous and God is asking us, will you give me access to what I've already given you so that I can bless it and so that you can use it to feed them? It's getting late. You know, you may have thought we had a little malfunction up here. What is this weird clock? Just counting down. 36, 35, 34, 3, 32, 31, 30. How about 6.30? We got about 6.30 left in this message. I better wrap this thing up. You know, with the countdown going, I, I, don't, I don't have time. I don't have time to, to take a break. I don't have time to take a season off. I don't have a time to, to shut down my recurring giving. I don't have a time to jump off the team. Like I don't have a, I don't have a time to just, hey, next season will be my season. Like I have, I have a finite amount of time. I have six minutes. I have five minutes and 58 seconds to, to finish this message. And you have finite time on this earth. And yet we live like there is no end. We live like there is no heaven. We live like there is no hell. And I'm here to tell you, maybe not for you because you know Jesus, but for somebody that you know, it's getting less and they're running out of time. They are running out of time. It is getting late in Seminole and Orange County for people who don't know Jesus. Like it's getting late. Like the, their clock is literally counting down. It's getting late for, for addi addictions to be broken in our community. It is getting late. The clock is counting down for, for the orphans and the single moms in, in Africa throughout all of Uganda that we support through our various ministries. It is getting late for them to be fed and for them to be clothed and for them to be in school and off the streets and hear the gospel of Jesus. Like it is, it is getting late. Their clock is counting down. It is getting late for for the women in sex slavery all across America and the world who are just waiting for someone to rescue them and the people that are trying to rescue them are counting on you and me to resource them like their time is getting late and every second that we wait, they're in pain and not even just their normal pain or their temporary pain, but maybe their eternal pain because they don't know Jesus. It's getting late. It's getting late for for babies on the verge of an abortion because the church won't speak out on it, won't resource it, won't serve, and won't counsel. It's getting late to counsel those mothers who are struggling with that decision that there's a better way, there's a, a better plan. It's getting late to, to have better foster cares and adoption so that's no longer the only option. It's getting, it's getting late for the poor and homeless kids, thousands of them just in our counties who are living in hotels and tents but still trying to go to school and virtual school and do all these. It's getting late. And you have the answer. You have the education. You have the resource. 
but you're sitting in the crowd consuming the very thing that God gave you to be a miracle. It's getting late. It's getting late for people who need a miracle. It's getting late for people who need a healing. It's getting late for people who need hope that only comes from Jesus. It's getting late for people that need God's grace, his forgiveness, salvation. It's getting late. Time's running out. 23, 22, 21, like it's, it's getting pretty late. Our time is really short, but it's also really long. It's short here, but it's long for eternity, so we should make sure we're investing in the short term so we can enjoy the long term with as many people as possible. If you call yourself a Christian and call Action Church home, I'm just calling you to a higher standard. It's getting late and we don't have time to wait. The time for passive Christians is over. The time for consumer Christians is over. In fact, if you put passive or consumer in front of it, you probably discount the second word in the phrase. So I just wanna be Andrew today. Not Jesus, that was a joke. I'd like to be Andrew. And I'd like to look into this crowd at Winter Park and into the room at South Orlando and into the room at, at, at Sanford and you're worshiping online right now. I'm, I'm looking and I'm saying, you have something in your basket. You brought something here today that we, you meant to consume. You brought something here today that has built a business. You brought something here today that has built a marriage. You brought something here today that you've only used for your benefit. And I'm asking you today to give Jesus access to your gifts and access to your ideas and access to your resources. I see you. More importantly, God sees you. And he sees the ingredients for a miracle. So give it to him. Give it to God. Watch him bless it. Use it. And then you and I, we get to enjoy the leftovers, both in this life and in eternity. As we transition to what we should do as a church this last minute or so, I want to talk to those of you who have never given your life to Jesus. It's getting late for you. But do you know where you're gonna spend eternity? Do you know that if it all ended today, you would spend the rest of your existence with Jesus? And if not, why? He did all of the heavy lifting. He wants to be in a relationship with you so much. And today, he's giving you an opportunity to action church or in your home to receive him. The bad news is that it's getting late. The good news is there's time for you. This time's about to run out. But by God's grace, he's given you this moment to choose him for eternity. Would you bow your heads at all of our locations, every head bowed, every eye closed. God, we love you. God, I pray for our church in this series. God, I pray that you would call all of us to give what we have so much more than finance and resource, time, energy, passions. Jesus, whatever's in our basket, we give you access to it. Action Church is not a place that consumes, it's a place that invests. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of the miracles that you have done and are going to do. Church, every head bowed, every eye closed. For those of you who saw that clock counting down and the Holy Spirit was speaking to you that today is your day of salvation, I wanna give you that opportunity to make that decision right now. 
Jesus, the perfect Son of God, the second part of the Trinity, making himself fully man, living a perfect life for you. Because the unholy people could not be reconciled to a holy God. And so Jesus lived perfectly so he could die as you, like in your place, as the perfect substitute. There was an exchange that took place. Our sin and shame for his righteousness and his holiness. The cross, Jesus' death, gives you and me access to forgiveness, thus giving us access to the Father through salvation. The resurrection gives us power over sin in the grave. And our job is to do what Romans 10 says, to confess Jesus with our mouth and believe in our heart that he is Lord. But it's not just an emotional decision. It's not just raising your hand. It is saying, no, God, I'm giving you access to everything. Like, you have control. For many of you, it's a first-time decision today. For others, you find yourself in this auditorium or at home watching, and you're just like me at 19 years old. I had been to every church service, every Sunday school, every Bible study, but, but Jesus did not have access to everything. And this 12 Baskets series was for you because you've given Jesus access to some, maybe a little, maybe a lot, but not everything. You, you are not willing to lay down everything and follow him. You, you have not said, Jesus, I give you access to all of me. So today, it's much more of a recommitment where you say, God, I'm giving you I'm giving you my basket. I'm giving you my life. If that's you, for the first time, or for the first time in a long time of recommitting your life, say, I need Jesus today to be the Lord of my life. Would you raise your hand right where you are? Say, I, I'm giving my life to Jesus. My time is short here, eternity is long, and I understand that a relationship with Jesus is all that I need. Would you raise your hand in this auditorium? Come on, Sanford, Winter, uh, Winter Park, South Orlando, online, everybody. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Jesus, for this moment. You put your hands down. Pray this in your heart as I pray out loud. Say this, say, God, I love you. And God, I thank you for saving me. Today, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I'm saved only by your grace. And I am confessing with my mouth and I'm believing in my heart that you are the Lord. And I'm giving you that place, complete, and total control. God, have your way in my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now, God, I pray for all of us. I pray this season of our church will be the greatest season we've ever had because we're giving you access to everything. God, call us to a higher standard. Call us to a higher level of sacrifice, generosity, compassion, serving. God, we at Action Church give you access to everything. And we pray that you would bless it and use it for your glory. We love you. We praise you in this place. Everybody said amen. Action Church, can we celebrate the decisions? Come on, really celebrate them. <laughs>